I'm business developer at Integras Technologies Limited. Um, today I'd like to talk about um, the uh, system of processing data for TV audience measurement, which is the gathering of information um, for the monitoring of uh, TV. Um, these are the contents, so I'm just going to run through it really quickly. I'll show you a scheme, um, how we collect the data from households through survey and other information about data production and processing. And then I'll talk about analytics and reporting through the AdWind Kite software. So this is a uh, detailed scheme of um, the uh, system of TV audience measurement. So as you can see here, the laser doesn't seem to be working, but um, these are the TV broadcasters. They deliver the, um, the, the channels to the households, which have the, uh, the panels uh, with the uh, TV audience uh, measurement people meters. These are transferred through the GSM network to a collection server, which then goes through uh, the database server with the uh, statist statisticians and other panel members. And then um, we deliver this data through AdWind Kite software to our clients, which would be uh, TV um, broadcasters and also, I would say, advertisers. Carry on, sorry. Now, to collect the data, we have to go through what is called as the establishment survey. So we create the universe, which is all the active members of the uh, panel. And to do this, we have to recruit people. And this is done through uh, a collection of uh, questionnaires, which are delivered to households to see, uh, to gather information about, you know, income, um, the education level, and other information like that. It gives us a good idea about the norms of uh, specifically Kyrgyzstan in this case. Um, so, uh, as I've said there, the aim is to build a panel that is highly representative with respect to the population. And we do this through sampling design, response rate and weighting, which I will talk about now. Um, so we need to guarantee a proper geographical representation of different types of residential structure in a locality which would include detached houses, apartments, flats, and other um, localities like that. Um, a highly representative panel consists of as wide a variety of socio-demographic structure as possible in terms of gender, age, education level, social status, income, etc. So what I mean by that is we need, to, we need to be able to reach as many different types of people as we possibly can um, during the establishment survey. And by, by achieving high response rates, we can make sure that we can actually reach these people so that the uh, establishment survey is as reliable as possible. Um, sample points are, are selected randomly, and uh, there's a specific methodology to reach the houses in a random manner so that we know that the, the data we gather is not, is not biased and it's more reliable. That way. Um, so, weighting, this is what the mathematicians and statisticians do during the collection process. Uh, what we try to do is, because we can't reach every single house in the country, we have to make sure that, we, uh, that the data we provide to TV channels is as reliable as possible and it represents the population as a whole. So what we do is we apply some um, mathematical equations to make the data that we gather a lot more reliable than it is. Um, so panel norms and weighting is all about um, creating conformity between our data and the population realities. And these are the panel norms that we usually use during data collection, which would be gender, age, education, economic behavior, the city they live in, household size, number of active TV sets, TV signal re reception type, ethnicity, and the list goes on, but these are the most basic types. Um, <clears throat> recruitment and TV meter installation. Given the information about panel representativeness through the weighting and norm establishment, we proceed to install TV meters in a panel that conforms with population realities. So what we do is uh, we go to the houses that have taken part in the establishment survey. We get their approval to install the people meters in their houses. Um, 
we also want to be sure that the, that the panel members conform by the rules properly so they go through a trial period in which we assess whether they are conforming with the rules we set out for them. And if, if they do work well, then we carry on working with them. If, if they don't conform with, um, with our rules, then we select new households to work with. Um, every year, 25% of, of the panels are replaced so that we ensure that we can reach as many different people as we possibly can. Panel data is automatically checked daily for anomalies and errors. We, we want to be sure that the data is reliable. If there are any households that generate error messages, we, we make sure that they are ex excluded from the daily data. In certain cases, technicians will be sent to the house, but uh, more often we can do it remotely through our Symbios system. So we don't have to go to the houses. We can just use the system to fix errors at the houses. Sometimes we will have to call them and tell them that they're not using the panels properly, the uh, TV meters properly. So we tell them to, to fix their behavior so, so that their data can be used at the end of their report. Moving on, quality check. So data production and processing. So this is a scheme that shows um, how data processes and it comes from the household and TV um, broadcasters and how it goes back to them. So we begin with the households. They input their data through the TV meter, which is basically a remote control. Every time they open the TV, they log in, they press a button so we know at what time they're watching what TV channel. Um, also, the uh, media groups send their information to the TV meter, which is then transferred to the collection data via GSM network. Um, so we know what channel they are watching. It's the uh, audio, audio matching technology. So um, certain sounds are sent to the server and then uh, they're, they're compared to the information or the sounds that come from these houses' TVs. So we know uh, which channel they're watching. And then this is transferred to the Symbios server, which is basically the main, uh, the core server that we use to, to produce uh, data. Um, our control center, some of the data has to be processed, some of it can be sent straight to the distribution server. Once it goes through the control center, we can be sure that the data can be read and understood by uh, TV channels and advertisers. And this is sent to the advertising agency and media groups. So this is basically the cycle of how um, information comes from the household and goes back to the TV channels and also advertising agencies. Data collection and processing. So uh, as I said, it's just a recap on what I talked about. Uh, data comes through the households into the Symbio system. It's uploaded to the servers through GSM. Um, the data is checked daily um, to see if there's any errors or if the data is reliable. Um, and then we prepare the data for processing in the production system, which is Symbios. Data weighting. Now, I'm not a statistician, so I don't know. Uh, if I start talking about this, we'll be here for about five years. but. I'll give you a basic information about it. We want to make sure that the information is as reliable and truthful as possible. As I said, we can't reach every single household in the country. So what we do is we use um, weighting to, to make the data a lot more representative than it is. Um, and they use iterative proportional fitting, which I, I don't really know what it is, but that's the system that's used. It's been used for years, and it's the most reliable methods of making the data reliable, basically. Um, so in terms, in Kyrgyzstan specifically, what we do is we deliver the data to our clients, which is TV, TV um, broadcasters and advertisers by 10 a.m. And what we do is we, we use the data from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. the next day. So that's a whole day's data which we which we process and send to our clients. Um, it could be in XML or ASCII format. It doesn't really matter, but we prefer using XML because it's a lot easier to understand and it's a new way of um, assessing technology. 
Uh, as I said, data which is not reliable or there are errors that are omitted, so they're excluded from uh, daily reports, so we know that um, our uh, information is reliable. And we send notifications to our clients that the uh, daily data is ready to be reviewed and seen. Moving on to analytics and reporting. Whoops. So the software our clients are going to use is called AdWind. Um, it's easy to install. All you need to do is um, go to the website. You install it. If you have your login credentials, you just sign in. And you can just use it any, any way you want as, as long as you have an internet co connection, basically. Um, now, the uh, processing, it's not done on the user's computer. It's done in the uh, servers. So basically, there's no, there's no um, stress on the user's computer. So you can basically use any, even the oldest computer if you want. Um, and it's sharing. And basically, it's the quickest way to, to assess the data. And these are different types of analysis. These are the most basic ones. I'm going to go into a bit more detail. We have standard, graphical, and advanced types of analysis. So this shows, this particular one shows um, the shares of a TV channel for one month. As you can see, um, the green ones are the highest shared ones. Uh, all of the information is color coded, so you can easily differentiate between different um, well well uh, performing and not so well performing channels. Um, it, those of you who are familiar with Excel, maybe you know pivot tables. Uh, basically, you can add or remove as many variables as you want, and it just takes a few seconds to do that. Um, this is a bit more detailed. It shows different programs, basically top 30 unique programs by channel in actual year. As you can see, there's rating and share. Um, it lists the uh, programs that have been the most successful or popular within the year. And uh, channels are color coded, so you can easily differentiate between different channels. Um, on the top, you can see um, the, uh, the different TV channels and then the, uh, the parameters for analysis. You can add or remove these TV channels as you please, so you can make the data you know, more specific as you want. Pivot analysis, once again, it's, um, it's really similar to Excel. It's basically the same uh, idea. What you do is um, you can see here the market share of all channel groups and channels in one month or any month you select. Um, it's 443,000 or so um, spots, which is computed within a few seconds. So that would give you an idea about how effective and quick uh, you can analyze data through the system. Um, here, you can see uh, a schedule analysis. Um, these are different TV channels, basically every row. Um, so you can compare which channels have the most viewers at any time during the day. Um, the, uh, the bumps are not a, uh, they're not a coincidence, by the way. Um, basically, as you can see, there are some uh, indentations. Uh, what happens there is um, an advert plays, so people usually don't want to watch the adverts, so they switch to another channel while uh, the adverts are playing. That's why you can see when there's a decrease in one channel, there's an increase in another, and another one. So that shows that people just switch to that channel while there's an advert playing. Daily review, um, you can combine as many charts as you want. So uh, it gives you a better idea of what's going on. And you can uh, use this data any, any way you want, basically. Um, the, the pie chart shows daily shares. Uh, there's a different way of viewing it, of course, as a table. And then this shows the uh, shares increase and decreases throughout one, one day. Um, once again, you can combine your analysis. This is specifically for advertisers. So if you have a marketing uh, campaign, uh, you can monitor your campaign um, throughout the day. Um, and this specifically is Hyundai. It's their um, adverts for the car. You can see the reach curves. I mean, this is for the, uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, marketing. You would probably understand reach curves and um, also 
effective frequency, how many people view the channel at least once, going up to at least 10 times. And these are just different, different versions of seeing the same data, essentially. Once again, uh, campaigns, shares of the campaign, reach curves. This is, once again, for advertisers. Also, t TV channels can use it. And then, finally, reports. What we do is we can set parameters so we don't have to enter the same stuff to the system every time we go into it. You can just uh, select certain parameters, you save it onto the system. So once you open it again, you don't have to input the same stuff, it just comes up automatically. Of course, it's updated every day. Um, and then you can send these to our managers or whoever wants to see the data, basically. And that concludes my presentation for today. Any questions? Спасибо, Синан. Было очень интересно. Меня зовут Мирджан Балыбаев, телеканал НТС. Меня интересует вопрос рекрутинга, то есть процесс, процедура отбора домохозяйств, в которых будет устанавливаться датчики пиплометрии. Насколько я знаю, будут отобраны, будет отобрано 250 домохозяйств в городах Ош, Ишкек и Джалалабад. Верно, да? Кто и как будет определять, yeah. кто и как будет определять эти, отбирать эти домохозяйства? По какому принципу? Первый вопрос. Окей. Okay. So um, the basic uh, method to do this would be to go to at least 10 times the number of households we want to recruit. So if we're um, employing 250 people meters, then we would have to go to 2,400 or 500 houses, and these are selected randomly. Um, what we do is basically um, we send our, um, our interviewers uh, sample points so that we ensure that the houses are selected at random. Um, that's the key point to it. I mean, it has to be as representative of the whole um, population as possible. Um, once we send the interviewers, um, we select the ones that are most representative of the panel for recruitment. So what we do is we visit them again and say, if you want to take part in this, um, in this process, then we're going to come and install the TV meters at your house. So the key to your question would be um, keeping the uh, sample points as random as possible, but also finding houses that represent the population as accurately as possible at the same time. I hope that answers your question. Вторая часть вопроса. Кто и как может гарантировать, гарантировать, дать гарантии того, что не будет возможности, вероятности манипулирования результатами вот этих датчиков? То есть 250 домохозяйств будет отобрано. Есть гарантии того, вот, кто будет гарантировать, что на них не будет влиять, не будет yeah. возможности манипулирования, чтобы в определенное время в прайм, скажем так, в 9 вечера yeah. им не давали команду, yeah. не знаю, каким-то образом их не уговорили, чтобы был включен, включена кнопка uh, определенного телеканала. Yeah. Кто yeah. это гарантирует и как? Well, first of all, the households only we know it and the researchers know it. I mean, none of the TV channels have access to the addresses of who's taking part in, in the process. So only we know which people and which specific people and their addresses. No one else knows it, not the TV channels, not the advertisers. So there is no possible way that they can influence TV uh, viewers to watch a specific channel. Does that cover the question? Спасибо. Спасибо большое. Есть еще вопросы? Да, пожалуйста, Элира. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, no we are looking forward for the results of such yeah. um, um, research. And uh, my question is about analysis. Uh, is it going to be qualitative uh, research or uh, purely quantitative? And uh, uh, what about the access to uh, research data? Uh, can media researchers also access it to do some uh, research for uh, maybe qualitative research, how to interpret this, 
and uh, uh, taking into the consideration the geographical area of Kyrgyzstan, it's mountainous and some places have uh, no access to TV signals and how you're going to deal with this in your sampling if it's going to be a random mm. sampling. Yeah. Thank you. Well, first of all, the um, data is um, quantitative, but it's up to um, statisticians to turn that into something valuable as in a qualitative data. Um, so obviously these TV channels have to actually employ someone who understands statistics um, so that they can turn these reports into something that's meaningful for their managers so they can use the data more effectively. Um, in terms of uh, your question about um, accessibility to TV channels, of course it's a big problem in Kyrgyzstan. Some areas don't get reception. Uh, we're working on that right now, but we don't really have an effective solution for that. But I'm confident over time that we'll be able to implement systems that will resolve that, that problem at the same time. Спасибо. Еще вопросы, пожалуйста. Да, пожалуйста. Здравствуйте, Марлис Чонаров, Пятый канал. Вот, э, предыдущий э, из аудитории был вопрос по поводу до доступа к данным этого исследования. Если я правильно понял, это исследование еще, ну, измерения еще не начались. Если это так, то когда они начнутся в режиме онлайн, будет ли какой-то доступ для участников рынка? к результатам. Спасибо. Well, the data will be available for those who take part in the committee and they have to um, actually sign an agreement with us so that they get the credentials to log into um, the system. Um, in terms of uh, your question about, um, sorry, could you, could you repeat the question? I can't remember the first one. Sorry? Oh, okay. Чтобы аудитории so, было понятно, yeah, вот, okay. будет ли доступ да, к данным? Да, yeah. so, um, uh, 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 Уважаемые коллеги, что касается порядка доступа к данным, эти вопросы лучше задавать в Объединенный медиакомитет. То есть там будут свои правила, там, там будет Это вопрос не к поставщикам. А, тогда техническая возможность, допустим, получения дан, ну, таких данных, допустим, другим людям, ну, не только другим людям, но и организациям, она а, ощутима, то есть вопрос безопасности, допустим, может ли э, такие данные поступить, допустим, к КНБ, или, допустим, такие данные поступить э, для, к примеру, э, политических выборов, ну и так далее, и так далее, и так далее. Вот каким образом это будет осуществляться, и будет ли она безопасна? Спасибо. I mean, um, only the people with the credentials are able to log in. We don't give um, passwords to anyone, basically. So the data is only accessible by uh, people who have the information to log in. Um, further to your question also, um, I'd like to say that TV channels, they're free to use the data and they can, uh, they can publish it as they wish. But most, most of the time they don't get, go into the details, they would only give the most basic information. Можно я поясню по этому вопросу? Тут немножко, наверное, идет путаница по каким данным и какой, какие уровни, уровни доступа. Информация, которая собирается первичная, по панели самой, она засекреченная абсолютно, да, чтобы на панель ни в коем случае не оказывали влияния, в том числе политики, рекламные какие-то, рекламодатели и так далее, кто угодно. Панель держится в секрете, ни у кого нет доступа к этим данным. Для этого мы нанимаем международного подрядчика, потому что они знают, как это делать, как засекречивать и так далее. Сырые данные тоже только там, понимаете? выкладываться будут уже в обработке данные для телеканала, для тех, кто покупает. То есть это частная инициатива, people метры вы должны понять. Это не общественная инициатива, не государство никакая еще либо. Да? То есть это частная инициатива, она стоит 2,4 миллиона долларов за 5 лет. Это огромные деньги для нашего рынка. То есть если вы хотите получить доступ к данным, естественно, вы должны стать подписчиком, покупать эти данные. 
будь то международные организации или телеканалы, или еще любые медийные структуры, правительство, если оно захочет покупать данные, а оно захочет, потому что в социальном пакете, пожалуйста, посмотрите, у нас сколько государственных телеканалов. Поэтому они будут закупать уже как бы через индустриальный комитет. У нас все продажи, скорее всего, будут идти так. И какой-то, если нам поправьте, если я не права, какая-то часть данных, уже как бы, с опозданием, да, она будет выкладываться для, для рынка, для того, чтобы рынок ориентировался. То есть, например, не вот сиюминутные замеры да, сегодняшнего дня, а оно будет выкладываться, допустим, через три месяца, за, ну, в апреле будет выкладываться за февраль, допустим, или там за январь, для того, чтобы рынок понимал все-таки, как, как, какая идет динамика, какое идет развитие. В любом случае, ресерчеры какую-то часть данных открытых, я думаю, что они получат. Синан, поправьте, если они права. Yeah, right. yeah. Университеты могут эти данные закупать, вот если вам нужно real-time для mass communications, департамента, там еще для каких-то целей, вы можете прям в real-time иметь эти данные, как телеканал, просто становитесь частью индустриального комитета, заплатите взнос за данные и все. То есть это покупные данные.